It's estimated that approximately 3 million exposures to bloodborne pathogens or BBPs occur annually, largely in healthcare settings and from accidental punctures. BBPs can pose a serious threat to the health and well being of workers and other building occupancy in your facility. This rings especially true if the proper materials, protocols, and training aren't in place to handle a bodily fluid spill. While spills of this nature are most prevalent in healthcare environments, it's important to understand that they can happen in any facility at any time. For that reason, every facility should have a response plan in the event of a bodily fluid spill. The Occupational Health and Safety Administration, or OSHA, defines BBPs as infectious microorganisms in human blood that can cause disease in humans. As such, it should come as no surprise that it's absolutely critical to properly handle and clean up bodily fluid spills to prevent the possible spread of any BBPs or OPIMs. OPIMs, which stands for other potentially infectious materials, is a broader term used to encompass other potentially infectious bodily fluids, such as vomit or diarrhea, that are common outside of the healthcare industry. While we'll continue to use the term BBP for this video, understand that what we're saying applies to OPIMs all the same. OSHA has a set of standards and regulations for handling BBPs and OPIMs. To stay compliant with the OSHA standards, business professionals are required to undergo annual training. That's why in professional environments, the meticulous handling of bodily fluid spills is not just critical for maintaining a safe and secure workspace, but is also a requirement. This video provides a detailed walkthrough of cleanup procedures highlighting the use of proper disinfectants and personal protective equipment, or PPE, to prioritize safety and compliance. Let's dive in. Once a bodily fluid spill occurs, it's critical to promptly and correctly clean it up for the best chance of avoiding injury or illness to employees and guests. While the BBP cleanup protocol may vary slightly from facility to facility, it should always be centered around these seven steps. Cleanup prep, initial cleanup, deep clean, disposal and disinfection, PPE removal, waste management, and record and report. Let's go over how to perform each step. The first step is to gather supplies and prioritize personal safety. Preferably, your facility will have a bodily fluid spill kit in stock. Formerly called bloodborne pathogen kits, these will contain everything you need to handle a bodily fluid spill, including a written set of protocols. In the event that your facility isn't stocked with a bodily fluid spill kit, we'll go over everything you need. Make sure you have the appropriate PPE on hand. The appropriate PPE depends on the nature of the spill, but you should always wear gloves designed for biohazard removal. Larger spills will likely require protective eyewear, a mask, and a gown. The additional PPE may be optional for smaller spills, but it's still highly recommended. The Centers for Disease Control, or CDC, recommends a certain sequence for donning PPE. First, put on a gown. This should fully cover the torso from neck to knees, arms to the end of the wrists, and wrap around the back. Make sure to fasten it to the back of the neck and waist if applicable. Next comes the mask. Secure ties or elastic bands at the middle of the head and neck. Fit the flexible bands to the bridge of the nose. Perform a fit check to make sure it properly fits the face and below the chin. Then place goggles or a face shield on over your face and eyes, adjusting to fit best. Lastly, put on disposable gloves. These should extend to cover the wrist of the isolation gown. Once PPE is done, gather all of the required materials for an efficient cleanup operation. That includes disposable absorbent towels, EPA registered disinfectants, disposable bags, a rigid container such as a thick plastic bucket or a sturdy cardboard box, a mechanical pickup tool like a pair of tongs, forceps, or a brush and dustpan, and any cleaning supplies you think will be necessary. Again, this will all be included if your facility has a bodily fluid spill kit. It's time for the second step after you have everything that you need ready. Step two is to commence the cleanup process. Disposable absorbent towels can address the bulk of the bodily fluid spill. Just place the towels covering the spill and let them soak up the waste. Dispose of used towels in a designated disposal bag, securing the bag within a rigid container to prevent leaks and potential contamination. If you choose to use cleaning equipment during the cleanup process, make sure to thoroughly clean and disinfect the equipment after use. If the spill involves sharp objects, such as glass shards, use the mechanical pickup tool to place them in a disposable bag. For safety, it's important to avoid directly handling any sharp objects. Now that the bulk of the spill is out of the way, you can move to the next step. Step three is to perform a deep clean and disinfection. 
it is absolutely imperative that you perform this step using an EPA registered disinfectant that is specifically designed for eliminating BBPs. Typically, the disinfectant will specifically mention HIV or HPV on the efficacy data sheet and possibly the label. It's also crucial to follow the manufacturer's recommended guidelines for contact time. Otherwise, you have not truly disinfected anything. This is because the disinfectant wouldn't have enough time to fully eliminate the pathogens. As a result, the surface is still contaminated, potentially allowing the pathogens to spread additional illness. With that in mind, thoroughly clean and then disinfect the affected areas. These must be performed two separate steps unless you are using a cleaner disinfectant. Otherwise, the disinfectant may lose efficacy while cleaning up the soil. Check out our article on cleaning versus disinfecting to learn more. We'll link it at the description below. So once cleaned, apply a fresh layer of disinfectant to the area, allowing proper dwell time. Then recover with an absorbent wipe or possibly a mop if needed. When complete, continue the fourth step. Step four is to dispose of the bodily fluid spill material safely. Always refer to local authorities regarding the guidelines and regulations for BBP and OPIM disposal that are relevant to your industry. If one is available, bodily fluid spill kit materials should be disposed of in a biohazard bag. If one is not available, use a disposable bag. For protection against punctures or tears, place the bag in a secondary rigid container. There are two important details to remember. Ensure the bags are properly sealed and kept safety and keep safety protocol, protocols in mind, excuse me, especially by wearing gloves when handling a bag with bodily fluid spill materials. After the waste has been disposed of, you can move on to the fifth step. Step five is to remove your PPE safely. Generally, PPE is removed in the reverse order that it was put on. For proper removal techniques regarding the various forms of PPE, refer to the CDC guidelines. After removing PPE, it is crucial to wash your hands with soap and running water thoroughly. Often a kit will include alcohol hand wipes. However, these are only meant to address hand hygiene until you can get to soap and water. Hand washing minimizes the risk posed by any lingering contaminants. For an in-depth guide on the CDC recommended method for hand washing, check out our video, Proper Hand Washing Steps, Hand Hygiene 101. We'll drop that in the description below as well. If any non-disposable items were recovered during the cleanup, now would be the time to meticulously clean and disinfect them. Once PPE has been removed, proceed to the sixth step. Step six revolves around waste management. For the proper disposable of BBPs and OPIMs, follow facility guidelines for dealing with infectious materials. If no such guidelines exist in your facility, infectious materials have to be treated and disposed of by a licensed biohazard disposable company. This ensures that all of the waste is disposed of in accordance with regulatory standards. If these items were tossed into a dumpster, for example, the entire dumpster becomes hazardous waste and the facility will be charged accordingly. Once the waste has been properly disposed of, it's time for the seventh and final step. Step seven is to record and report the incident. Make an official record of the incident, include the date, time, circumstances of the exposure, and any actions taken after the exposure. Report this to a supervisor or to the person identified in your facility's exposure control plan. Additionally, the incident should be reported to any emergency medical service personnel who is taking over. Adhering to proper cleanup procedures for bodily fluid spills is crucial for creating a safe and secure working environment. If your facility doesn't have a bloodborne pathogen response procedure, consider reaching out to an Imperial Dade rep. We host a bloodborne pathogens workshop that educates people on the information, tools, and precautions they need to reduce the risk of occupational exposure and safeguard their health in the workplace. Get in touch with one of our representatives at an Imperial Dade facility near you if you're interested in learning more about employer requirements and the OSHA Bloodborne Pathogen Standard. If you want a hands-on procedural training for proper bloodborne pathogen cleaning and disposal, or if you want to stock your facility with bodily fluid spill kits, 